Hello, this is Bill McMillan with Capital Outsider. I'm here down at the courthouse, just down from the Capitol with Jeff, and we've got uh, Julian Heiklin here, who's with the, uh, what's, what's the organization that Tyranny you're Tyranny Fighters. Tyranny Fighters is what he calls himself. And uh, you're here for what purpose? I'm here to distribute uh, fully informed jury information uh, to jurors or anybody else that passes by. The Can you explain point, what that yes. is, please? The point is that the jurors, um, the, the, the judge is going to instruct the jurors that they must uphold the law as he gives it to them. The judge will be lying. The jurors must judge the law as well as the facts. Juries were instituted to protect the citizens against the tyranny of government. It is not the, judies, the jury's duty to uphold the law. It is the jury's duty to see that justice is done. And there is a large precedent for this. Uh, there are many, many cases in the country. I have been involved, actually, uh, in four such cases, one of which the police officer nullified the law, one of which the district attorney nullified the law, one of which the judge nullified the law, and uh, one in which a jury nullified the law. Now, you have, I understand you have literature that you're going to be passing out in I front do. of the courthouse here. I do. I can give you one. Someplace in this pile, I have some. Now, is it considered legal for you to pass out this literature? It's legal for anybody to pass out any literature. Now, if you slander or libel somebody, that individual can sue you. But uh, nobody can stop you from passing it out. Uh, nobody can legally stop you from passing it out. What, what has happened on occasions when you've done this? I've been now at 20 courthouses. And uh, at about 10 of these, uh, I wasn't bothered at all. We didn't even see federal marshals. At uh, six of these, federal marshals tried to drive us away, but we wouldn't leave, and they finally gave up. At four of these, we've had incidents. Um, in Allentown, our photographer was arrested on our first visit. Uh, we've been back there three more times and have never seen a federal officer there. I've been arrested now, I've been at 12 times, I've been in the court, U.S. District Court in Manhattan, New York, and I've been arrested 10 times and robbed once. But once they didn't even bother to arrest me, they just stole my stuff. And, and when they arrest you, what are the charges that they... Uh, oh, there is a, um, uh, <coughs> a regulation that Homeland Security has put out that prohibits this. It's like a parking ticket, there's a $100 fine. Um, of course, I don't pay the fine. Uh, and you can go to court and uh, fight it. I don't, I don't even bother to go to court. I just ignore them. And uh, they've arrested me under warrants and dragged me in. I actually spent two weeks in Rikers Island once, but I won't uh, put up with this. It's, this is just uh, impermissible. And in fact, they had the same ordinance against photography. Uh, my photographer was arrested in Manhattan. Uh, the American Civil Liberties Union defended his case. The case was dismissed. They sued the uh, federal marshals, and uh, they didn't even go to court. Uh, they made a settlement, and the settlement was that uh, they got some financial reward. They were promised they wouldn't be uh, brought in under any other ordinance. And the U.S. attorney is instructing all the U.S. courts in the country that they are not to arrest anybody for photographing on federal property, which is open to the public. Why Albany? Why today? Albany, Bernie invited me up. I mean, I, I go any place I'm invited. Okay. I'm a man that can't say no. Yeah, we got a quick shot of Bernie there. The, um, now, when a person's a juror, what sort of circumstances would it be where they might want to, uh, to exercise this right that you claim they All have? All right, I'll tell you some circumstances. One was in, when I lived in Center County, Pennsylvania. I was a professor at Penn State University. I was arrested there 15 times, so I became quite friendly with the district attorney. We were in the same line of work uh, and um, uh, uh, on different sides of the aisle, but yes, we, saw, okay. we saw a lot of each other. Anyway, he told me that uh, he had an obscenity case against the owner of the adult bookstore. He said it was the best, closest case he'd ever had. He went there, he says this was a sure win. They tried it, the jury found them not guilty. He said, I will never try another obscenity case again, and he never did. Now, did the that nullified in Center County, Pennsylvania, 
the obscenity laws have been nullified. So as far as the obscenity laws that were on the books, though, the, the, the person had violated them, but the jury, uh, do the I take it? jury found them not guilty for whatever reasons. It's their own business. They don't have to give reasons. Anyway, but that ended obscenity cases in New York. Now, there have been many famous cases. Um, during the Civil War, when the slaves would run away, technically they were property of the slave owners and they were supposed to be returned. Northern juries, uh, uh, Northerners, many didn't uh, return them. They had this underground railroad sending them up to Canada. The people who were running those were brought to trial and the juries found them not guilty, even though there was no doubt that they were breaking what was the law at that time. <clears throat> and those are, that's probably some of the most significant jury nullification cases. But I'll tell you another one. I was um, riding in my hometown of Teaneck. I made a U-turn on uh, Teaneck Road and went into a parking lot. The cop came over and says, pulls up and says, you know, you just made an illegal U-turn. He says, well, he looked at me. I'm a pathetic sort of looking guy. And so he looked at me and says, well, I'm not going to give you a ticket this time. I'll so, just give you a warning. So he nullified, he nullified the law okay, right okay. there. Now, now, that doesn't mean it's nullified permanently, right. but in that instance, he nullified the law. Besides the historical uh, uh, <coughs> references that you made to this, this approach of, uh, of jury nullification, is there a moral argument for it? Oh, sure, the moral argument is that uh, governments always become tyrants. I mean, you're living in this country now, you must know what's going on. We're the number one prison state in the world. I mean, we're putting people in jail for owning vegetables, for heaven's sakes. Uh, it, 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 not only are they owning vegetables, it's marijuana is the second most nutritious food known after, after soybeans. I mean, it's, uh, this is like burning witches. Their future generations will wonder how we did it, just like we wonder how did they burn witches. Many laws are basically immoral, and so in England, the jury system was forced on it so that the government would not have the last say about guilty or not guilty. The citizens would make that decision. Would, would and the, the jury can do whatever it wishes. Would, 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 would a person uh, upholding this concept of jury nullification also be able to make a decision, not necessarily on their opposition to the law, but on the opposition to the sentence that might be imposed? Uh, the answer is yes. But, of course, they often don't know the sentence before they... A sentence but, but, isn't given until after the jury has but, made a decision. But perhaps if you had some sort of drug offense in which if a person's found guilty, there's a mandatory 10, 15 some, in years. In some of them, there's a mandatory minimum. They, they, they might... The jury can find not guilty for any or guilty for any reason it wants. Now, in a criminal trial, if the jury finds not guilty, the district attorney cannot appeal the case. It's a final decision. If the jury finds him guilty, he can appeal to a higher court. But the district attorney, if once that jury says not guilty, it's over. Otherwise and you run in into fact, double jeopardy. Right? And in fact, the juries are not even required to give any reason, though sometimes they've been asked, and I can give you some examples where there's interesting reasons. There was one in Washington, D.C., I think it was, where they had this black fellow, and he was guilty as could be and whatnot, and the jury came back with a not guilty victim, and the judge just couldn't believe it. He finally got two jurors who were old black ladies, and he said to them, look, you're not obligated to tell me anything. He says, but I'm curious. Why is it you found this guy not guilty? And they said, judge, we're not sending any more black men to prison. That was their reason. Now, that is not a, in my opinion, not a good reason from a legal point of view, but it's certainly an understandable reason. And that was their reason, and that was it. Well, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Very thank, you. thank you for having me.